What's up ladies and gentlemen, my name is Destroyer and welcome back to my let's play of What Remains of Edith Finch, part number 5, or it could be the ending as well, because if we hit escape and have a quick look at the family tree here, basically everyone is being ticked off, apart from Edie and Lewis, um, Sven we've already done, Kay we've covered, who is who was Sam's wife, um, and Sanjay is uh, has already been mentioned, so they don't get their little sketch done. So um, I'm assuming Edie and Lewis is left. So uh, let's continue on. I assume we have to go back down. Mom spent months searching for my brother. Then she sealed the doors. Yeah, it's quite annoying. Having all the doors sealed, but uh, understandable at the same time. Here we go. I'm sh yeah, it's back out there. Whatever Milton had found in the house, Mom didn't want it getting out. All right, I think I just went around the long way for no particular reason, and we can't go that way. Brilliant. Good start. Well done. <laughs> Alright, looks like we have to continue up, like, go higher, I'm assuming. A quick little look in here. Odin Finch, by Eda Finch. Mom definitely blamed Edie, but I think Lewis blamed himself. After he graduated, he just spent more and more time in his room. Until Mom got him a job at the cannery. Can we have a peek? Everyone always told me to stay out of Lewis's room. Except Lewis. Achievement unlocked. A closer look. I'm assuming you get that because you look through all the peepholes. Um. What? <laughs> I'm gonna go on, you know, the wrong way. Wow, look at this though. That's pretty cool. So we're getting to the, uh, what I call the emotional part of the game. But I promise I will not cry. Lewis's room smelled very, very familiar. That part of him lived on. Legalized marijuana. It's a hooker pipe. Gamepad. Oh, yeah. Lewis and I spent a lot of time playing games together, but he was surprisingly bad at them. He died a lot. The Wonderland Turbo. Cool. I was going to say, what did they play it on? The TVs up there. He was so proud of being Indian. I think for him, it was a way to be something other than just a finch. Look at that, what a set up, a microwave and stuff. That's what I have to do for my room slash setup. I have to uh, get like a bar fridge, microwave. I could just live in my room. <laughs> Not even go to work. All right, locker contents. Let's get uh, Lewis's story going. Dear Mrs. Finch, as Lewis's psychiatrist, I can understand your desire for an explanation. As I see it, the trouble began in January, shortly after we convinced your son to seek treatment for substance abuse. Newly sober, I believe Lewis first noticed the monotony of his daily life. He kept working at the cannery. But he withdrew part of himself. In our sessions, I saw the same behavior. His mind began to...
Get into what? Wanda? Wanda. Okay. I asked him to describe it. He We're multitasking now. Imagining a labyrinth. He'd feel his way about. Then something moved. Bats. And toads. And things that have not names. He knew it was all in his head. Hey, that's clever. But he took it very seriously. I had hoped he'd find himself. But he found something more. I worried about him then. Daydreaming at the cannery. I want to go up the stairs. I spoke with his boss. But he said Lewis had become a model employee. Methodical, tireless, focus. Like a whole new Lewis. So I let him go on. I even encouraged him. It seemed very promising at first. He told me he'd made a new friend. Probably easier to play with a controller, but a little too late now. On the edge of a city he named Lewis Topia. Lewis Topia? He built the city up slowly, brick by brick. Then he made musicians. And songs for them to play. He talked about starting a band. And he was always humming something. Every day his imagination grew stronger. He no longer spoke at the cannery. But his chopping was as reliable as ever. Then one day it struck him. At all the cheering crowds, even the stones under his feet. Mate, if I can find a corner to run into, I will. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Were all in his imagination. So he could do whatever he wished. He held an election for mayor. And he won. Of course he won. They begged him to stay, but his mind was already wandering. It became a game for him. He'd conquer a city, then immediately push on. New Lewisville.
St. Louis. That's an obvious choice. He started drifting away from our reality. Minneapolis. <laughs> Until one day he forgot to go home from the cannery. Minneapolis. Even as his mother pleaded with him, part of Lewis kept sailing on. I thought that was going to be the end of multitasking. In Lewisburg, he heard rumors of a... Beautiful prince. Beautiful prince. The prince was on his own quest for... Radiant rainbows. Radiant rainbows. I'm gonna miss it. He followed the sound of his electric guitar. Electric sitar. Oh, sitar. His chase led him to a golden palace east of the sun and west of the moon. Even then, his logic remained sound. He knew the world was all in his imagination. He was so proud of having created it. I think this part of the game confirms I don't have very good uh, coordination trying to multitask, doing two different things with uh, both hands at the same time. In his time. own eyes, he'd become something greater than a king. I blame my mouse though. It's not running as smooth all of a sudden. For someone who'd never known success in the real world, I think it was overwhelming. That's my excuse anyway. And then it struck him that the real Lewis was not the one chopping salmon, but the one climbing the steps of a golden palace. My imagination is as real as my body, he told me. It was hard to argue with him. began to forget the world we know. Sure loved his weed. Could you imagine a smell working in here? I think it pained him to remember Lewis, the cannery worker. began to despise the man with a royal contempt. Look at that, he's just on autopilot, mate. A million miles away. I still thought I could save him. Even after he said he was being crowned king over all the lands of wonder. The palace would be packed with his companions. Including the wise Calico who'd insisted on advising him.
Molly to cut. Oh, the peasants. His prince waited, holding his crown. There was only one thing left to do. I'll put the crown on. Bend down his head. And the rest I think you know. Mrs. Finch, your son was a kind man who will be missed by all of us who knew him. My brother was really cool. I wish you could have met him. I understand that that is a sad thing and it happens in real life, you know, people you know, suffer from substance abuse and all that. But uh, in my own personal opinion, that stuff is uh, basically self-inflicted. Um, no one's, you know, got a gun pointed at their head saying, you know, take these drugs, blah, 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 blah. Uh, I'm not saying it's right or anything like that. But uh, after playing that myself just then, um, I'm kind of in the impression of these YouTubers that... Uh, played through that part a while ago maybe acting a little bit uh you know there's youtubers that were like bawling their eyes out during that part yes it might have hit home like i said you know it's like it's a personal thing it is a real thing substance abuse and all that and i'm not saying it's right and all that sort of stuff but yeah i don't know i just don't understand how personally how that could affect someone that deeply so yeah like, I don't want to offend anyone or anything like that. Like, if, you, if you're watching this and you happen to, you know, suffer from similar things like Lewis did. Um, you know, I don't want to offend anyone, like I said. But at the same time... On the way back from Lewis's funeral, my mom told me to start packing. Um, yeah, like, I wanted to get she my... until the day before we left to tell Edie. I wanted to get my own opinion across about it, so... Yes, it is sad and all that, but I'm I don't... I'm not sure if she wanted to make it easier <laughs> or harder. Okay, I'm just going to stop moving until I finish what I'm saying. Um, it just didn't really affect me in a way that it affected everyone else, so... Yeah, there we go. I wish we'd stayed. I wish we'd stayed, I don't understand huh? why we left. My mom ended up leaving everything behind. Oh, is that Sanjay? Disaster relief, Sanjay Kumar, evac specialist. What happened that night had been coming for a long time. Maybe it should have come sooner. One thing that kind of annoys me about this game is the way it just pulls you into it, uh, into the direction it wants you to go into. <laughs> it's a little bit annoying, I will admit. But it had to end one way or another. All that's left now is to tell you about that last night. Alright, anything else before we do that? I don't think there is. day, Edie just watched us pack and didn't say a word. Until supper, when she raised her glass and said, To our final night together, and all our final nights apart. Grandma, you know what I said about alcohol. Some of your medications are very Edith, specific- I left a present for you in the hallway. Why don't you go open it? 
The grown-ups have to argue now. I'm sorry, you're right. We're all leaving tomorrow. Let's just enjoy our last... I'm not leaving. Edith, you're excused. Okay. So it looks like uh, they might have had a bit of a fight. The power had been shut off that morning, but Edie always had plenty of candles. When my mom said the library, I don't think she knew about the other entrance. Or that Edie had a key to it. afraid of isn't going to end when you leave the house. Edith has a right to know these stories. My children are dead because of your stories. I think it's best if Edith and I leave tonight. We'll have the nursing home send a van for you in the morning. Okay? Yeah, she's wanted out, huh? History of the Finches by Edie Finch. Dear Edith, there's so many stories I wish I could tell you, but there's only time for one. This is about what happened on the night you were born. That night, the tide went way, way out. It was the first and last time I ever saw the old house aground. There'd been an earthquake out in the middle of the ocean. They called it the lowest tide in a thousand years. God, it smelled awful. You know, I've seen that house every day of my life. But I never thought I'd go back to it. We're actually going to go to it? When the fog rolled in, I lost my way. I got turned around. I started seeing things. Things I'd forgotten had ever existed. But when I saw them, they felt like old friends. That night, a lot of things came back to me. Or maybe I came back to them. Things I can't explain, but that I need you to try and... Edith, what are you doing in here? It's mine. Edith! Mom, you're gonna rip it! Let go! I kicked and screamed, but... Mom dragged me to the car. I never saw great-grandma Edie again. The next morning, the van came to pick her up, but she was already gone. After that, we moved around a lot. We both tried to make the best of it. A few years went by. My mom didn't like to talk about it. But she started getting sick a lot. <coughs> the rest happened pretty quickly. She got better for a while. And then she didn't. 
and then I was alone. The last finch left alive. Until I found out about you. I'm still not sure what to tell you about all this. If we lived forever, maybe we'd have time to understand things. But as it is, I think the best we can do is try to open our eyes. And appreciate how strange and brief all of this is. This journal was supposed to be for you. Simulating childbirth, yeah. But now I hope you'll never see it. I just want to meet you. And tell you all these stories myself. But I guess if you're reading this now, things didn't work out that way. This is where your story begins. I'm sorry I won't be there to see it. It's a lot to ask, but I don't want you to be sad that I'm gone. I want you to be amazed that any of us ever had a chance to be here at all. Good luck. Screenshot. There we go. A story by giant. A story. <laughs> story by giant sparrow. Seems like it's in memory of uh, Shirley Dallas there, 1948 to 2013. So I'm assuming. Um, uh, what's her name? Edith died during childbirth. Um, that's what it seems to uh, be saying here. Um, and like I was saying before about that whole Lewis thing. Um, I'm just not that, me personally, I'm not a sensitive person, so stuff like that doesn't really directly affect me in that sort of way. I mean, you know, I'm not saying it's right or anything like that, but, um, yeah, I don't know. Maybe there was a little bit of acting going on with these other YouTubers that were, like, crying and all that. Uh, maybe they had a personal friend that, uh, you know, in, uh, endured a similar thing or the same thing or something like that. Like, I don't know. I don't know them, obviously, personally, of course, but, um... Yeah, that's. I was just trying to explain why I wasn't like you know, all sad about it or anything like that. I'm. Ne we're all built differently in a sense, you know. So, and we all take things and we react in different ways to many different things. So, yeah, I sort of wanted to like, not that I really have to justify my actions, but uh, yeah, I just wanted to let that be known just in case. Uh, if you were watching it and you were like, oh, geez, you're a bit cold and heartless. No, it's just that it doesn't affect me like that. I am desensitized to certain things in life. You know, that's what happens when you grow up and, uh, you know, become a man and all that sort of stuff, you know, become an adult. Um, everyone's different, like I said. So, yeah, there we go on that. Uh, but it, it is a great game. It is short. Um, but I think it tells the story in ample time. It is very well done. Uh, I love this with the rolling, uh, the end, end credits here. Obviously, pictures of the uh, actual people that worked on the game when they were kids. So, we've got, who's that? Holly Rothrock, the 2D artist. We've got Michael Felick, the producer. Alvin Nelson, another producer. Um, so, yeah, I, I, one thing I did really enjoy about the game is sort of the way you had to, like, get through the secret passages and all that. That's very clever. Um there's Steve Green, the lead sound designer, and Jeff Rosso, the uh, the composer. But yeah, overall, it, it is a good game. Um, I don't think the normal price for this game is justified in a sense. Once again, that's just my opinion. I think $30 for a game that goes for less than two hours is a little bit of a, uh, I don't know. Whee! Melissa Fuss. The picture scared me for a sec there when I first saw it. It looked a little bit like an alien. But, um, yeah, I don't think it's worth 30 bucks to be honest. Uh, I did pick it up for, like, 7 bucks on sale, which is good. But I am glad I got it, and I am glad I played it. Um, and it's going to be on my channel now, so that is good. It's been, what, since 2017, I think this was released. I think I mentioned in part one. And, uh, yeah, this outro is going for way too long. So I'm just going to say, if you enjoyed this video, 
and the entire playthrough, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Show some love to for me in the channel. Uh, subscribe for more content. A lot of games coming up, especially in February. Um, February 2022 is going to be packed full of games, which is going to be good. So I'm going to be busy, busy, busy with work and recording and streaming and stuff like that. I'm going to start streaming a lot more. So if you're interested in seeing a stream of me playing games, head over to Destroyer Plays, which is that's my Twitch handle, except the PLZ at the end. I couldn't have PL. A Y Z or P L four Y Z because Twitch is a little weird. But uh, anyway, I'm going to stop talking. I'm going to end this video. So, like I said, if you enjoyed it, thumbs up, subscribe to the channel for more, and I'll see you in the next video. Adios.